Hey, what is going on everybody out there? This is Jake James Lugo. Welcome to the channel and welcome to a brand new episode of A Definitive Discussion. I hope you guys have been enjoying all the episodes that I've been posting up here on the channel. I've been having a lot of great guests. I have a lot of other cool guests that are lined up down the line, so definitely be on the lookout for that stuff. I'll probably be talking about it on Twitter at some point or announcing it on my other various social media. But today we're going to have an interesting episode because we're going to talk about a subject that I think is a little bit, you know, off a little bit outside the boundaries of what we normally talk about. I brought my friend Solange uh, Goleku, who obviously we met at a convention a while back. We met at uh, ShadowCon not too long ago. But anyway, Solange, welcome. Appreciate having you on here. Thank you very much. I'm glad to be here. It's cool. So we're going to talk about dating. We're going to talk about relationships. We're going to talk about that in relation to people that are passionate about video games, that love video games, that probably play them, anime pop culture and stuff now the reason why i brought you on is because you actually have a blog where you talk about relationship stuff and you talk about a very a bunch of varying degrees of things related to it tell me a little bit about your blog before we deep dive into this <laughs> yeah sure so my blog is xoxosolo.wordpress.com and i originally made it to target to initially to target to young women who um just want to get insights on lifestyle, you know, they're in their 20s, lifestyle relationships, fashion, and now as I'm getting more into it, I want to try and target it to a wider audience and not make it just towards women and try and get some more, I guess, um, oh, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just want to get more of, uh, Oh, okay. <laughs> Just broaden the audience, basically. Yes. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah, and that makes sense. That That's always a good thing. I know that, again, relate the idea of relationships, the ideas of dating, you know, those concepts, they're not just to one gender or the other, or, or even one sexuality or the other. You know, it, it's right. a very, it's a broad stroke. Mm-hmm. So, exactly. so the reason why I brought you on with that is because, again, we both love video games. Again, when I saw you at ShadowCon this year, you were dressed up as Yuna from Final Fantasy yes. X. <laughs> Specifically, Ten Two was the good outfit. It was that yep. solid outfit. She, again, I'll probably, again, with some of the actual pictures we got here on the video, guys, you'll see some of the pictures because I took a couple good ones of you in your in your cosplay <laughs> outfit. Yes, you did. And thank you for those because they came out really good. Nice. They're, they're pristine. So definitely I hope you guys enjoy that. But again, also, there'll be links in the description box below to her blog so you guys could see that. But let's deep dive into dating. So if besides, you know, the basics about dating or relationships and stuff, which we're, we're both human beings and everybody listening to this is human beings. So you get the idea about just dating normal people, whether you're heterosexual, whether you're homosexual, it doesn't matter. But Ooh. specifically, one of the reasons why this I wanted to talk about it on this show is because for gamers or for people that play video games, that have a passion for the hobby, that have some sort of, you know, interest in gaming and the gaming industry, we get a very negative stigma and stereotype that's attached to us when it comes to dating and stuff. Like, have you ever heard something like that before? To be honest, no. So I'm actually very curious to hear what the negative stereotypes or negative comments that come from gamers and dating. So basically, this is a thing that's dated way back into the 80s, you know, especially when gaming was much more in its infantile state. You see it a lot in Hollywood movies and a lot of different, you know, entertainment mediums where gamer, a gamer or traditionally, you know, gamer personified is someone that's socially awkward. That, oh, that is oh, yeah. someone that's like, they can't go out and initiate. They can't really go out there and actually look for someone to be yeah. a mate and stuff like that. And again, it gets a lot more complicated than how I'm explaining it, but just as a streamlined basic version is that mm -hmm. gamers have a tough time looking for love. That's basically what the big thing is. Gotcha. So for us, and again, us as living proof, and I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys listening to this, this obviously is just a stereotype. It's an untrue thing. It's just the way that people that play video games or are passionate about it have been perceived in, me in you know, movies, TV, you know, different media mm -hmm. for many, many years. And it still goes on even today, even though people I feel like, you know, have, you know, learned a little bit better, have, you know, decided to, you know, not not just interpret someone that loves video games or just like a character that might love video games and stuff, but like gaming has become part of our culture so much. It's become such a big entertainment medium itself. It, it's mm -hmm. ridiculous. It's almost at this point accepted socially to, to, to be a gamer at this point. Would, I mean, would you agree with that? Absolutely. I mean, the gaming industry has just taken over the world. Even if you just look at your smartphones, everyone at least has one game with them in their pocket every single day. 
Exactly. And it, and it's not just mobile gaming. I mean, it's handheld gaming, you know, 3DS, PlayStation Vita, Game Boy mm-hmm. back in the day. I mean, in the in the home, you know, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Nintendo Wii U, now Nintendo Switch at the time we're recording. This, <laughs> right. you know, Nintendo Switch just came out and that's a big deal. So gaming has been accepted, you know, within pop culture a lot more better than it has in the past, at least in my personal opinion. Now, how yeah, does this think. relate to dating? Uh, I feel like this is a thing now that's kind of like grown up you know, as more people start getting into the medium, as more people started getting into the hobby and such, where either there's there's other stereotypes that popped up and such, but it still seems to be a thing where there are those individuals that are still out there that think that gamers have a hard time looking for love. Like, so in your experience, you know, just again, young woman, young youthful woman out there looking <laughs> for love, like any, any one of us out there, you know, what has it been your experience? I mean, when you go out on dates or like when you're looking for someone maybe to go out a date with, has like uh-huh. the idea of gaming or something ever come up? Oh, absolutely. Anytime I go on a first date, I bring that up on the very first meeting just because in my opinion, I want that individual to basically take it or leave it. If you are a gamer, then hopefully you'll find that attractive. If not, you know, sometimes I do get that raise of an eyebrow. They may look at me a little awkward because it's not very common in our society to to see a female gamer because going back to, I guess, the negative stereotypes, that is what they envision if they're not a gamer. Um, so I like to bring it up first. They, if I don't say anything, they typically won't either. Now, so here's a, here's a bounce off of that. Do you think, mm-hmm. like, usually that's something that you should be so open about? Because I, I have no problem with it. I'm very, like, unapologetically open about it. You know, because it's <laughs> part of my everyday life. You know, it's part uh-huh. it's part of everything that I'm a part of, you know, as a right. freelancer. And it just as a man, as a young man, that, that's something that I'm very proud of, that, that, that I'm passionate about. It's like anybody, like, guys out there, the very machismo thing to be proud about is either sports, cars, mm-hmm. You know, working out, <laughs> get, making gains at the gym, you know, stuff yeah. like that. It just happens to me. I just love playing on a, on a small little box where I could go hang out with Mario and stuff. That's just me. But really, for me, again, I'm more expressive about that. You know, when it just comes up casually in conversation, not obnoxious and such. But do you think like a lot of people are a little bit, you know, shy about doing that and about being, you know, so open about it because they feel like they're going to get judged? Possibly. Honestly, that that can happen. And it does happen. So I don't blame any individual that chooses to not mention that from the get go. True. I mean, I I feel like, you know, eventually, we're going to get to the point if we're not already close to it, where that it's not such a bad thing to bring up. Because there are again, there are a lot of those people that are out there that think it's an immature thing to do. Like it's still Mm -hmm. young for children. Like there was a story a while back where I think it was a couple doctor's offices or different people of varying careers would say that they had to hide the fact that they played World of Warcraft for fear of losing their business or for fear of being able to socially interact with a lot of other people within their circles. And I was like, you know something, that kind of sucks. Yeah. When you think about it, because uh, again, it's not like playing a video game is automatically a detriment to a one's character it's not something where it could immediately be seen as unattractive by the masses like it's not like you're doing anything like terrible to another human oh. being you, you just mm-hmm. it's like if you're watching a movie am i right absolutely it's just a shame that it's getting such a negative connotation and you know when you have to say that you play video games you never want someone to judge you in that way now, it's the same as any other hobby now in your experience, again, sh- feel free to share or not, have you ever gone on any sort of date or been, again, while you're dating or looking around and such, have you ever gotten that judgment from someone? Like, again, I, I would assume, I'm going to ask straight up, like, wh- have you gone on d- with dates with guys that where they've been like, oh, you know, she plays games or like, or has been like a little bit of a turnoff for them? I No, I haven't experienced anyone being turned off by it, but I've experienced a lot of guys thinking that I'm lying. Really? Like, I, yeah. I know I've heard that at times, and I feel like the reason why I bring that up is because the, the stigma is that when a girl says that she's into gaming and stuff, it's automatically a big turn on, it's a big attraction type of thing. But when a guy sometimes says it, it's usually where he gets judged, you know, as not being mature enough on, in some points. I can see that, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can, it's a thing. Yeah. It's a, it's a real thing, and I, I feel like and I've, I haven't really had it bad but mm-hmm. I've seen instances, you know, with people that I know and friends of mine where yeah. they'll they'll tell somebody like, oh, they, you know, they're a big gamer or they collect gaming memorabilia and stuff like that. And immediately the person that, you know, they're trying to appeal to immediately gets turned off and immediately, you know, tries to shy away of stuff. I'm like, wow, that kind of sucks 
because you know besides the fact that i know them and such they mm-hmm. it, they're still good people it's just like you know they're just expressive about something that they like to do right i think the fear again just links back to how it's presented on media if you see someone that's into very much into gaming a lot then you can envision like what does their room look like is it just a bunch of action figures and systems all over the place and you know what no that's not how real life is it can be and if you're not into that okay well you know bye see you later but that's not all that a person is and there's so much more in someone's personality than just being judged on that gaming aspect here's here's a random question and i think it's really prevalent you know to this subject is that when someone has that type of judgment like that or at least has that sort of view on someone when they're expressive about being someone in, you know that's into video games you know while they're looking for love do you think that's a testament to like maybe how maybe how narrow-minded that other individual is like when they're being so judgmental like that yes i well i mean it's a very broad it's a very broad statement maybe a little bit too harsh to say that but like in my eyes, like if I see some, if I'm going out with someone and I tell them like, Hey, I'm into gaming and you know, I write guides and stuff like that. And they're like, Oh, and then they become very, very distant. To the mm-hmm. point where it's like, you know, they, they shut you out on a lot of stuff. Then I feel like, Oh, that, that person's just being a little bit too condescending and, and maybe doesn't, doesn't have the maturity to be so open-minded and right. so open to, to, you know, being tolerant of what another person is like when they're dating. Right. I, I can, I'll definitely fight on the fact that I can be a little narrow-minded and closed-minded to not be open to, you know, new experiences or just someone that's into something that they are not. And, you know, when you are meeting new people, you have to be very cautious of the fact that you're going to meet lots of individuals that aren't going to necessarily have the same hobbies and interests as you. And you have to look past that. You know, you can't just automatically shut someone out because, you don't like what they do or you have already some envision as to what their life is like because they say they like video games. True. So let me ask you this because you've gone to a bunch of conventions, correct? Again, I only saw you at Shadow. A couple. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, we've gone to conventions before in the past. You've gone to some here in Florida. I've gone to various different ones. What is your experience, you know, Looking, going around, you know, talking to different people or seeing people that might be, you know, dating or hooking up and stuff uh, in that atmosphere, you know, is it a little bit different than probably going to like, again, another type of social gathering that maybe has nothing to do with gaming, anime and stuff? Or is it very similar in nature? It's completely different, in my opinion. I think for going to a convention, one, you just feel at home. Like that's your entire interest and love in one giant building. And you get to share those experiences with um, with people that have the same interests and you feel like you can be yourself. You feel like you can connect with people more. Whereas when you are just, you know, in the real world, you're not easily going to find someone that can click with you on that level. True. And, and you know, something funny thing about that is that I find more people to be open and more relaxed at conventions, especially like when there's like, you know, those dances, when those, mm-hmm. those gaming events, those competitions at panels, you know, or even just hanging out in the hallways, they tend to be a little bit much more relaxed and at ease, you know, mm-hmm. and comfortable with expressing themselves. Like I find a lot more people, especially younger crowds, you know, both, you know, straight and hetero and homosexual, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, people that just really, they, they're, they're a little bit more comfortable being out there and being so free of actually expressing themselves like that, or like actively looking out for someone maybe to hook up with or just to talk to. Like mm-hmm. that. I, I find it a little bit more with the homosexual relationships in conventions than I do in like other gaming events where it's a lot, it seems like there's a lot more heterosexuality more expressed like that. Like when I went to like Comic-Con or E3, that at least, you know, that's what I saw in the grander scheme of things. And granted, smaller events like a shadow con like what we just went to not too long ago or mm-hmm. like a florida supercon down here it tends to be a little bit more nuanced and there's a smaller pool of people so obviously you're not going to be able to see you know everything and everybody in one in like mm-hmm. one weekend and such but that's at least within my experience of what i've noticed and such like do you notice like the same thing honestly uh, no i don't i i don't <laughs> really pick up on on i guess really the social relationship aspect when i go to cons well, you, I mean, you're focusing on, you know, the panels, all the spectacle of everything. Yeah. True. But, but I mean, it's like, again, as you like talk to people, it, it's something, at least that which I've noticed, you know, from going to a lot of those different events and stuff. So mm-hmm. here's, here's another thing. Okay. What do you feel is the best thing about someone? Okay. Like if you, you're dating someone or if you're going out and talking with someone 
uh, when you when they come out and say that they're into video games and stuff, like what is it about them, male or female, that really show that makes them kind of like express something that's like great about them? Like, what do you think is like a common thing that you see with people that are like that that are usually into games? Ooh. Um. So, what do they say? That's just like that. It could be anything. Something that like shows about their character. You know, something positive. You know, that's like that that you see is like a common thing. It's, let's see. That's a really good question. Um, wow. <laughs> <laughs> you stumped me there. Uh, why don't you go first? I want to hear an okay, example. Okay, so for me, for one of the things that I know is, you know, as a guy looking at, you know, various women or going on and dating women and such, one of the things that I noticed about them when they say that they're into gaming and they're like really into gaming like that is maybe as much as me, uh, they tend to be very thoughtful about a lot of the actions that they take, you know, they, very, mm-hmm. they, 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 they really think things through and, and it comes from a little bit of problem solving. That's how everybody, male and female gets. Like when you play a lot of video games, you tend to be a lot of bit more of a problem solver in most instances, not mm-hmm. so much, you know, not so much go, go. And again, everybody's different. There's a millions of different people out there, so it might not apply to them, but at least from what I've noticed from dating different women, some of them tend to be more thoughtful in the actions that they take. And, you know, whenever mm-hmm. like you're going on dates or going to like the movies and stuff, just hanging out. So mm-hmm. whenever there's a moment, whenever there's like something that is like the two of you are involved in, it's like, you know, either a conversation, sharing food or whatever, there seems to be a lot more weight behind the thought of like what they do, especially if there's something, you know, something that they're doing that's just like presented to you. That's at least, you know, from what I've noticed. Okay. Well, I guess then on my end, I mean, I, I don't want to sound like I'm <laughs> in a bad light. I just, I don't, <laughs> going dates quite often so it's really hard to narrow that down as to what they all kind of have in common Mm -hmm. um or what's like that common um aspect that each person can have I will say that at least recently a lot of the men that I've like been out with are fine with being open and being honest for the most part and that's something that at least I try to strive on like to say what I'm looking for um I don't know if that answers your question. (laughs) It's tough. It's tough, you know, because, again, we're talking in more general terms here. And, again, a lot of it is dependent on everybody's experience because, obviously, we both have different experiences dating. That's just how everybody is. No no two people are going to have the same exact experiences dating, looking Mm -hmm. for relationships, whatever. It doesn't matter who the individual is, male or female. It's going to be vastly diverse and such. Mm -hmm. But the reason why I focus in on gaming is because, again, those are just things that I've noticed amongst people that I've dated that are into gaming and stuff. Now, I have dated people that haven't been you know into gaming as much here here's an even better question like do you okay. notice like there's a lot of differences between people that are into gaming and those that are not when you date them because for me there there's vast differences in the way that you know you do things and the vast you know differences the way how you talk to them you know as opposed to okay. like you know with someone that may have similar interests to, to you yeah um i guess i could say that for those that i've dated that are into gaming they're much more playful they're very silly and they're not afraid to just have fun. Um, whereas one person that I did who wasn't into games and it was kind of hard. <laughs> I really wish he was. He was more serious. Um, he was more serious. He was very, very, like, it was just hard to just p- be playful with him. And I felt like I couldn't share that um, personality side with me with him. Um, so, yeah, I guess it's just that lack of a playful side. That's that's totally true, and and I notice that again in in, mo- in most women that I've dated is where you know their idea of playfulness I think is a little bit different. Like when you, like you said, yeah. when you meet someone that's you know into gaming or again has that similar hobbies to you, they tend to be a little bit much more again relaxed and chill and more daring when they joke when they, when they mm-hmm. goof around and stuff. I noticed that a lot. Like one person that I dated a while back would be so. Uh, kind of like more gung ho about doing different things, whether it's getting a cosplay or checking out certain shows or like, you know, mm-hmm. just getting together and just doing various different things because they knew that they, we had very similar interests, even though we may have not had the same taste in video games or entertainment media here and there. But when I dated someone that wasn't and it was completely different where their their tastes were a little bit much more whenever they would look into stuff like entertainment, they were more into movies. 
than anything okay. else more in TV. So again, there's a little bit of parallels there, but like their sense of humor and their sense of, you know, uh, what they get joy out of and stuff was completely different. And like even okay. just talking to them and just trying to have those conversations, which it was just not the same. Mm -mm. But that doesn't mean you can't make compromises. You know, one person, you know, for that example, that person you were dating could have been open to either watching you play your favorite game or joining in to play together. And, you know, you on your end getting into whatever entertainments and activities that they were interested in. Yeah. I always think like any, any type of relationship needs compromise. Like that's yeah. the first, that's a very big thing. There's compromise, trust, and uh, open-mindedness. Those Absolutely. are like three big things that I feel like in any relationship, whether you're just starting out when you're in the heat of things or when you're way down the line years afterwards. Cause again, you get, you get into a whole nother thing like marriage. We're not talking about marriage. Yeah. We're talking about dating. <laughs> okay. Get, get your minds out of the gutter. People. <laughs> <laughs> but, but like for people that are dating, whether you're starting out or whether you've been dating for some time, those are the, like the three cornerstones. I feel like that are all, similar and that what you know people need you know between each other in order for things you know to work mm -hmm. and i feel like sometimes people get knocked out within the first or second round of those two things because they're just not willing to accept or understand really willing to understand and explore what the other person might be into especially if there's a dichotomy there between them liking gaming or not liking gaming, or just again different types of interest right which is a little bit crazy and stuff so tell me a little bit about your blog Okay, now, have you ever really kind of explored or at least dived into any of the subjects on your blog when it, did, when it came to, like, you know, dating people or looking at people that are dating and such that are into gaming or maybe into other forms of entertainment like that? I haven't yet, and honestly, that <laughs> that's a really wonderful idea. It gives me an idea to start writing about that, um, and that way I can also reach out to, you know the young individuals that are into gaming and still struggling in their relationship area. Cool. Now here, here's a, here's a, I just thought of this one right now. So do you think, feel like, because much like any other hobby or fun thing, obviously too much of a good thing is always bad, you know, especially in moderation and needs, things need to be, do you feel like sometimes gaming or stuff that are similar could be a factor that kind of either destroys, destroys a relationship or just like turns people off? When, when when you're dating and like again it, it, there's like something that breaks down the spark's not there anymore it depends if you're dating someone that's really into gaming um i would hope that that individual let's say if i was dating um, a guy let's we'll call him bob if he told me he was into world of warcraft great you know i support you that's you know i play my own games so that's cool but if i don't know to the extent of how much he actually played like if we tried to go on dates and he kept bailing to play his game or you know we're not hanging out because he wants to play his game with his friends then that could be that potential issue where it doesn't work so I, I think it's just that balance with how much <laughs> someone <laughs> can be involved in their games true true and you know what else i think is also important and it just just doesn't apply to gaming specifically it applies to anything when someone or at least one of the people is imposing like you ever met those type of people where they really want you to be into something or they want you to be into like a certain type of thing that might be different or contradictory to like what you're exposed to. And again, a lot of open mindedness comes into play here. But like when you're they're trying to get you into something that you're just not about whatsoever. Mm -hmm. I've met people like that before on both sides of the equation, you know, and again, since we're talking about video games and game and gamers and stuff, uh, people that have been into certain games that just want you to get down with them on this game because they want to be able to <laughs> play with you. And you're just like, nah, I just can't like, for me, one time it was five nights at Freddy's. I don't, I don't know how familiar you are with five nights at Freddy's, but there's, it's like this big internet horror game and stuff like that. And I don't like horror as much. Like, uh -huh. <laughs> that's just me. But, like, they really wanted me to get into this so they could, like, play the games with me. And I'm like, listen, you got to chill. You got to relax. And they just would not <laughs> let up and stuff. But, have you, I mean, in your experience, have you ever had someone that was, like, that imposing? Uh, not just about game, but about anything? Um, wow. Uh, let me think here. Definitely <laughs> not a game on my end, but for anything else? Yeah, it could be anything. Uh, 
I don't, I don't think so, to be honest. I, at least I can't really <laughs> pick one out. So I will say, I mean, I'm pretty good in that area. <laughs> you're, you're I might lucky. do that to people. But so wait, you know. <laughs> give me an example of like, maybe that you've done that to someone. Like try to get them into something. They were just like, nope. <laughs> okay, so this one would be a game. I'm really, really obsessed with Tekken. I grew up with Tekken. I've been playing it since I was in third grade. And so nice. whenever, you know Tekken, the fighting game? Of course, yeah. Just, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Come on! Not, well, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I love. Te- I love. I mean, I'm a Street Fighter guy for the most part, but oh. uh, but I love Tekken. Everybody loves Tekken at this point. Oh, right? I hope so. Um, I, anytime I had friends over, they would hate it when I would bring it up. I love playing it against my friends mostly because I love beating them in it, and I would try to tell them if they want to get better, then to please just buy the game and get used to it, get used to the buttons, the fighting skills, and we can play again. And I will never let it go. I just think it's funny. <laughs> and maybe I should stop talking about it with them. <laughs> now, hold up. Did you beat them with, like, Eddie Gordo or somebody? Or, like, you really went in there and was, like, all technical and stuff? Oh, no. Not Eddie. My girl is Ling Shayu. <laughs> uh, okay, there you go. There you go. That works. No, because you you got those people out there that pick up Eddie and then they, they think they're hot stuff. They pick oh, up I Eddie know. Gordo, or, or Christy and stuff. And it's like, oh, come on, son. Like, you're hitting the circle button all day. Come on. Right. And it's the same repetitive move, little cheaters. Yeah, exactly. No pizza for you guys. That's it. That's <laughs> it. So, but, but yeah, like, I think that's important though, is just, again, compromise and being understanding, even when someone's just not into something like that, I think that could be a very big important factor to, you know, that spark being there for two, between two people in a relationship. Like, that's mm-hmm. something I think is really important. Absolutely. So let me ask you this. Okay. When, when you're dating, okay, do you like some, do you think that someone that that's part of like that convention scene or part of that atmosphere is usually someone that you're more than likely going to mesh well together with or better going with someone that's the complete opposite that maybe not be, might not be into that type of stuff. So in my case, you know, it, and how we're talking about on the subject, someone that's into gaming or someone that's not into gaming, do you think like which one is usually better than the other? Oh, that's not fair. I don't think. <laughs> I don't think these are the tough questions. I don't necessarily think that whether you're into gaming or not into gaming, that one is better than the other. I think it just depends on really how you present yourself with it. Um, So, I mean, in my opinion, in the past, again, just recent examples, I've clicked really well with someone who's not into gaming because we have other aspects and interests that meshed well together. Um, whereas to someone before that person who wasn't really into gaming, who was into gaming, excuse me, you know, we were able to click on that fun, playful side, childish, fun, you know, aspect together as well. So I don't, I don't think it comes to which one is necessarily better than the other, but again, it just comes down to how they do present themselves overall. True. I think that that's important. And again, not limited to gaming specifically, but that could be applied to anything that could be applied to any sort of interest. Uh, the reason why I ask that is because sometimes I, like I meet people and I talk with them, they usually say like they like finding someone that's complete opposite of them. And, you know, the, the saying goes opposites attract, you know, that, that's that been for years. You know, it might be a little bit different now in the, today's society, but that's just been a, a long time phrase. And mm-hmm. usually what people mean is not just between genders, especially now these days. It's more where like the type of personalities that mesh or don't mesh well, but also the types of stuff that they're interested in. And for, for me and such, I, I've had experiences both with people that have been into gaming similar to me and people that have not been uh, into gaming at all. And I usually feel like, you know, as, as me as a young man, I have to be a little bit much more tactile and, and finessed a little bit when it comes to like interacting with that other person because knowing that they're not into the similar interests than, uh, than me, I have to go and look for other stuff actively to see different things that they might, you know, that we might have a connection with or we might have an actual similarity in. Gotcha. Well, why not? At least in within my own personal experience. Like, do you feel like that sometimes is usually the thing that makes more relationships last longer or make more relationships more interesting when they, when you have to go out of your element and look for stuff that's like different than what you normally are into in order to have a connection with that person? You know, I don't think you should. Well, if you are looking to have a, like, to find someone with a connection with, I don't think you should narrate. Whoa, God, this is tough. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let me say that I, I do think that everyone should stay open-minded. And then when I say that, I mean, 
yes, if you if you find someone that's into a lot of the same interests as you, great, go for it. But if you do meet someone that, you know, it's cute, they're attractive, they may not be into the same things you are, but you should still be open-minded to getting to know them. You may find something that they love and, you know, love to do that you may be interested in. I think it just comes down to not, not, I can't say this because I'm going to be a hypocrite. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I, I wanted to say to limit, let's say like having a checklist. You know, when you're meeting people, you kind of have that mental you want them to look like this and have this color eyes and be into these three movies. I think it's really hard because you'll be missing so many opportunities and so many different people out there because you're limiting yourself so much to your perfect person that you're trying to find. Do you feel like a lot of people do that? Because in my experience, like meeting people and not just people that I've dated, but just people that I've talked to, I feel like people do that often. And sometimes when they don't even realize it, like I've met people, I, I have a couple good friends of mine where, you know, the guys, they want to find a specific type of woman. Like sometimes they even get right down to the race, which I think is a really messed up thing. Sometimes it, it, it seems to be like another stereotype that people get into is like you know asian women love gaming they love anime they love all these different things and it gets mm -hmm. really crazy and it's a really messed up mentality when you really think about it because that, that you start playing into like this whole racial stereotype which is just not oh cool. gosh no but, but i also see it sometimes from the women you know looking towards the guys or again vice versa or whatnot where mm. they feel like oh they want a particular type of guy has to make mm. a lot of money he has to do all these <laughs> different things he has to have a car he has to have <laughs> muscles he has to do all these different things and they get into one thing or another but like do you feel like a lot of people do that yes i'm not even gonna like because i do that <laughs> <laughs> Um, and again, <laughs> this is where I will say to each their own, if, if people have a select list, at least they know what they're looking for and, um, they don't want to settle. However, again, if you do come across someone that you deep down in your gut genuinely feel like you click with, but then you're running through your head saying, well, they don't like this, or they do that one thing that I kind of don't like. That's where you should just still stay open-minded, get to know them for who they are rather than just looking at them as dating opportunity. And later on down the road, when you've established that type of bond or friendship, you can be able to more clearly distinguish, I guess, in which direction you'd want to go with that person. True. Now, here's one of the final topics we'll tackle that I think is also super, 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 super important. And it applies to everybody outside of gaming, both heterosexual, homosexual, asexual, whatever else type of like phrases we caught up with, you know, over the last like couple of mm -hmm. years uh, about, you know, building oneself up. And the reason why I say that is because I think that before you really go out into the dating world, you have to be able mm -hmm. to have some sort of appreciation and love for yourself. That, that's a very big yeah. thing. And I'm not talking just about physical because everybody says that and they think about the physical attraction, mm -hmm. yeah, which is a factor to some extent. But mm -hmm. really, I think it's more also you know, mentally, spiritually, you know, and, and also, you know, having some sort of grounding in yourself that it, it, it's, it, it allows you to be able to apply all the other stuff that which we've talked about and such. Now, mm -hmm. for gamers, you know, since we're staying on that subject, I feel like it's people, even though we kind of said like, you know, you have to be comfortable with your own passion, and your own hobbies and stuff, you know, having that willingness to go outside of gaming on your own spare time, not just playing video games, but also looking at other stuff to have not only have allow you to have a much more better appreciation for your hobby, but also to apply that in different ways when you're meeting other people. Like for me, perfect example, besides video games, I love Kung Fu movies. I love cinema. Okay. I love film. And that's cool. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have a very big appreciation for that, but that's also bleeds out into philosophy yeah, because mm -hmm. a lot of people that watch Kung Fu and martial arts movies, they also watch a lot of Bruce Lee films. That's just mm -hmm. natural. What I've done in my own spare time is that I've gone out and I've read a lot of his books, you know, a lot of his philosophical books and things like that, that have also bleeded out into other things. And that's how I apply that same type of logic. I apply that same type of like, you know, outlook on this. Do you feel like, you know, a lot of people sometimes don't really get into that? Not just with Kung Fu movies and stuff, but like other aspects of their life. Like some people that I've met, they play a lot of FPSs or they have an appreciation for that. They also like going and doing paintballing most of the time. Or they gotcha. like going out, doing other stuff, going out, working out, going out. And, uh, you know, uh, building up a business, you know, mm -hmm. doing different stuff like that, applying stuff to other avenues and other aspects of their life. So that way they can build themselves up as an individual, as a unique person and personality. 
I would say now, does this link to, let's say, if you have a friend that's really into soccer, they're trying to make it to the big league. So, of course, like their favorite game would be FIFA. And no, not big- necessarily. Yeah. Like, I think maybe maybe I misspoke there. But like, obviously, I don't think it's a fair thing to say that if someone's into like sports, they're they're playing sports games exclusively like that. Right. Tr- obviously, that's not always the case. What I'm saying is, though, is taking that same appreciation for whatever game that they have or whatever it is that they're passionate about and mm-hmm. applying that same sort of thing or having the willingness to apply that same sort of passion and stuff to other aspects of their life to build them up as an individual. And again, be ready to go out into the world and start dating people. Gotcha. I mean, yeah, I, I know a couple of individuals that at least they do take that and the same passion that they have for not just video games, but for any hobby that they have and just kind of apply it to Oh man, <laughs> you stumped me again. <laughs> That was a hard one. This was a difficult question. But I, th- but I think it's relevant. I think it's something that a lot of people even ask or even want to dive into because I think a lot of it is also implied amongst people. Like it's like an unspoken implication amongst people where it's like there's like that mutual understanding, but nobody really wants to deep dive into it. But also I feel like some people sometimes can be a little bit embarrassed talking about it. Like I've met people that... They, they've like thought about a lot of different things. They're, they're crazy about the next system coming out. They're crazy about mm-hmm. the next anime series coming out. They're crazy about the next film or Marvel movie coming out. But mm-hmm. like when you try to have those other conversations, it's not that they don't care about it. It's just they just haven't made the time to apply to other stuff. And it's like, okay, then then you start getting into a thing was like, well, maybe you should to become a more wholesome individual, to become a more wholesome person like that. You have to be able to take the time out and actually look at all these other things. Okay, and when you're saying that, just because I, I want to make sure I understand clearly with what you're describing, um, if someone, you said you had a, someone, let's say, they're very much into like the next Marvel film, and they're talking about it, whereas the other person, I didn't quite grasp what that <laughs> entire... Oh, okay, so yeah, let me, let me reiterate, it's like, okay, I've met people that are passionate about certain hobbies or whatnot, but that's what they're all about, and that's what they've put a lot of their time and their energy into being, and then expect to go out into the world and then, you know, just look for someone that, again, similar interest or whatever. Not even take into account that even then, I feel like they have to have other aspects of their life that they could kind of implement into their own personality, into their own individualism, you know, whenever they're going out and expressing themselves to other people and trying to look for love and trying to date other people. Like, they're all about one aspect. They're not multifaceted, I feel like, or at least they don't make an attempt to be multifaceted okay i mean that's what i mean by that gotcha i i think you know it it comes to a point where if again yeah this is a really hard one um i personally haven't really met anyone that's really only passionate about one thing now as to whether or not that stops an individual from maybe just growing within themselves it could because you're not putting ourselves out there to get involved in different as you said like getting involved in different um activities or different hobbies and to really be flexible with what you're into rather than just putting all of your time and energy into one specific thing and again it just brings down to limiting that person very small as to what and whom they can meet in their life true so here's a fun, stupid question. Here's a fun, stupid note to kind of go out on. Who has it more tougher when it comes to dating? Now, I know this is an unfair question to some extent. Guys or girls, or men or women, do, 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 who really has the, t- the tougher time going out and looking for love? Cause, That's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it's a stupid question, and I know that people are like, yes, you can't really ask that. You can't really like say a definitive answer like that. But I feel like there's pros and cons to both. Absolutely. I think this, you know, you know, I don't think (laughs) one specific gender has it tougher than the other. I think, well, I hear a lot of complaints from men because in our society, it's looked upon that men should be the one to make the first move and do everything first. And the woman should just have to wait for it or the woman should play hard to get. And I don't think that's okay. I think if you're a woman and you're into another woman or another guy, and you want to go talk to them, go talk to them. You shouldn't have to wait for them to come talk to you at all. I think that's silly. If you're shy, I get it. But at the end of the day, you have one life and you have to live each day like it's your last. And if you really do like someone, if you're attracted to someone, you should go for it. At the end of the day, you have nothing to lose. 
But to really answer your question, I will say probably, in my opinion, the guys do have it worse. <laughs> like, is that more based on the guys mostly complaining? Like, is there a lot of guys complaining? There are a lot of guys complaining, and I don't blame them because of what you do see in media and everything. You do see either men being looked at as dogs, or they're always like trying to just get what they want, and the woman just standing by and not doing anything. And I think that that's not cool. I think anyone should just really make the first move if you really want something. And you know what? If you're too scared or if they don't reciprocate, you just have to move on and go do it. Because at the end of the day, from what I've heard at least, is um, at least being a woman, is that men like confidence or just any anybody. They love confidence. So if you're going up to them initially, you know, that says more about your character rather than just standing by and then getting upset because they didn't come to you. True. I think every, I think not just women, you know, because traditionally it's women like confidence in a guy because, again, it's that traditional mindset where the guy is the dude that's going out and taking what he wants. He's doing yeah. all this. He's being the provider. That's a very, like, 1920s, 30s, yeah. 40s mindset, even caveman type of thing all the way back then. But I think now the way that society has progressed and the way that we change, you know, as, you know, here in the United States, because we live here in the U.S., uh, where... It's, it's a two-way street. It's both guys and girls that are both doing those types of, like, elements. Being the, the aggressive or the assertive one, I should say. Not really aggressive, but assertive. Do you think that with a lot of stuff going on in gaming now, because we have a lot of questions and a lot of debates about, you know, uh, gender roles as well as also what you know there's a lot of rise in the term feminism you know and i'm probably going to do a whole episode about feminism one day because i want to deep dive into that at one point but mm -hmm. do you feel like sometimes that has made dating a little bit more difficult not just for men and uh, but also for women in a sense where there's this really bad stigma that lingers around that like now there's a lot of women that are being the aggressors rather than that than being the assertive ones that, that you know i'll say maybe a little bit i think there could be some men or women um, that get turned off when there is another confident or too much of a confident woman in the room who, you know, is showing her pride or showing that she has no fear of going after what she wants because that just goes back to that stigma where women, quote, maybe not supposed to, they're not supposed to really act like that. Um, and some men who are you know, old fashioned may not be attracted to a woman that's very, very confident in knowing who she is and what she wants. True. I, I, I think that it's just been a, a very negative stigma. Not, not so much. There's anything wrong. With it. There's nothing wrong. No. Being assertive. Do, mm -hmm. what, do what you want. Go get yours. Do you. Exactly. Thing. <laughs> but I feel like, you know, with the internet, especially like on Twitter and stuff, and especially in the gaming industry now, there seems to be a lot of uh, backlash and a lot of vindictiveness on all sides when it comes to those types of discussions. Like, they become very hostile very quickly. And mm -hmm. it's, it's it gets away from the point of, mm -hmm. you know... Uh, of again, like what 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 makes a, an assertive person? What makes a good person? What makes an attractive person like that? And immediately, as some people for whatever reason they they believe that again, if you're the aggressive or assertive man, immediately you're a misogynist. Or right. on the flip side <laughs> of that, if you're an assertive woman or aggressive woman, you're immediately a bitch. And like that's yeah. not always the case. Like hmm. it really, I think it really comes down more to the motivation. I think it comes down to the consideration that that those individuals have or that type of person has towards whatever or whoever they're going for. And mm -hmm. such. It gets into a whole other debate and discussion. I don't want to get into now because I'm still stricken <laughs> to dating. And you can talk for like four hours amongst that thing. And I'm trying to keep this chill. But regardless, though, Solange, thank you for coming on thank here, you. chatting, chatting, dating with me. Where can everybody find you right now? All right. Well, my Instagram is at it's so. Oh, wait. Are you asking like my location Everything. or? No, not your local. No, they're not going to go show up to your house. So I'm just like, hey, we heard you talking about dating. We want to have it. Set. No. Well, I'm wait, where, where can everybody find you on social media? What, what kind of oh, stuff okay. you're doing right now? Any projects that you got going on right now? Well, let me start with my social media on Instagram. I'm at it's solo. Um, very simple. There's no numbers or anything. Um, if you're into fitness. So if you're like a gamer and a fitness person, um, just do it's solo fit. And my blog is xoxosolo.wordpress.com. Um, projects I'm currently working on, you know, this definitely inspired me to get some video game blogs on there. I know I've definitely put that on the back burner and I should go back to embracing that one 
hobby of mine. So I'm gonna, you guys are gonna see a new blog about that up there, hopefully within the next couple of days. And um, that's it. You know, summer's around the corner, so I gotta think of some cosplays to do. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, definitely. And again, like I mentioned earlier at the start of this episode, guys, all that stuff is going to be linked down below in the description box. Make sure you guys go check out all her stuff. Leave her some comments. Leave her some love. Let her know what's up. Say say hi. <laughs> leave her some owl pics if you want, because we always love sending owl pics to everybody, especially on the birthdays stuff. I, I got to this thing where I send every anybody that I know, I send them a bunch of birthday owls, like just on the goofiness and stuff. But... <laughs> But definitely check all that stuff out. Definitely check out that stuff. We we definitely have to do a, a written collab at one point. I know we talked about it yeah. at some point after this. So it. probably after you guys have probably heard this episode at some point, we'll, you'll probably see something. I'll let everybody know on Twitter and YouTube and stuff. So that should be fun. That should be interesting. So definitely, again, thank you so much for being on thank here. You. Appreciate it. Don't forget, guys, leave us a like here on this video. Don't forget to leave a comment down below. Let me know any sort of questions, comments, or concerns that you guys might have. Keep the discussion going down below. Let me know about also any suggestions of guests or topics that you guys want me to tackle here on Definitive Discussion. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel as well and share with your friends. Hopefully, I see you guys in the next video. It'll be coming out very, very soon. I've been very busy with a lot of different projects coming up. Again, I got the, the guide for Ghost Recon that's happening right now, so that's happening in a few days. So definitely keep in tune with my social media, with Twitter, to find out what's going down. With that being said, guys, we will talk to you again very soon. Peace out, and stay epic, everybody.